Hey everybody, it's your average jeweler again. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new, thank you for showing up. I hope that you'll subscribe if you're interested in learning more jewelry, gemstones, many of the questions that go along with that. If you've been around, thanks for being here. I hope you also, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below. Hit the like button if you enjoy anything here. And today we're talking about moissanite again. We're going to talk about some various things that make it interesting. I'm going to answer some of the questions that I've received from the other video and some comments and some new information that we didn't talk about. And then we're going to talk about some pros and cons. And I even want to get into some buying information, some tips and a little bit of a guide there. So let's get right into it. Now some of this, as we talk about moissanite, is going to be a little bit of overlapping information from when we discussed it with cubic zirconia. But there were some questions and comments that I wanted to respond to and some things that I wanted to talk about a little bit more. I also wanted to give you a better opportunity to understand the buying process and maybe what to look for there. And again, more specifically look at pros and cons for just moissanite. If you don't know what moissanite is, it is a clear gemstone. It's also a lab-grown gemstone. That's really important. You can find it naturally, and it's really interesting. They usually find it naturally in meteorites. Now, there's not a lot of it but most of the situations where they found natural moissanite have been in meteorites. It's nothing like what they tend to grow in a laboratory. Usually it's not the clean shiny stone that we think of, but it is really cool to think about where they first discovered it and how the history of moissanite kind of developed from finding it in a meteorite. On a very similar vein, one of the things that I found really surprising is how a lot of people seem to view the term simulant and alternative, as in diamond simulant or diamond alternative, as derogatory or negative terms. I hope I'm not bursting any bubbles, but when people say that, they're, that's literally an objective way to identify what they are. Um, if it was not for being able to make moissanite as something that looked like diamonds, we really wouldn't have it today. The only reason it gained traction and popularity is as a diamond alternative, and simulant just means something that looks like. So those terms just help us as we're trying to figure out what we mean when we talk about it. 99% of people buying moissanite are buying it because it looks like what a diamond looks like. A diamond's been around longer, so it's not anything negative. I wanted to clear up that water because I was surprised how many people seemed offended that it was referred to as a simulant or as an alternative. That's just what it is. If you type in those terms on Google, that's exactly what comes up. So again, not anything derogatory. You'll hear it referenced. You'll hear it in marketing. You'll hear it from jewelers. You'll hear it from people that sell it. Um, some people seem to want to talk about moissanite as its own gemstone, which it is, but a lot of other gemstones are alternative to something else as well. Uh, it's, it's not unusual for those terms to be used. I hope that helps. Again, you may have a differing opinion, but 99% of people that deal in jewelry and gemstones, that's how they're going to talk about it. I also wanted to say I enjoy seeing and reading your comments below here on YouTube. I want you to keep commenting. I want to know what your thoughts are on this. Um, but please watch the entire video first because I find that many people have some of their own strong opinions and some things that I've said throughout the video don't seem to be reflected in some of the comments. And so I just encourage you, watch the entire video. You're going to see some of my observations, you're going to see some of the facts, and you are going to see some of my opinions, and I'll try and make those distinctions as we go along. But at the end of the day, moissanite is a good alternative to diamond. I'll say it. There it is. I can recommend moissanite as a alternative to diamond. Now, to be more fair, because it is strictly a lab-grown stone that most people are buying, unless you're in a museum somewhere, you have lab-grown moissanite, it's a little more fair to compare it to lab-grown diamond, if we are comparing it to diamond. But moissanite does have some fantastic attributes, and I do want to give it credit where it's due. 
Uh, a lot of people felt like I was maybe a little too harsh on it when I spoke about it in the past, and that's because my personal preferences, I still prefer diamond if it's an option, but moissanite is genuinely a good stone. And so let's talk about some of those things. Something that came up that I found really interesting is that there are actually different types of growth in moissanite. One of them is a cubic formation. We're talking about it on a chemical level now. And one is hexagonal. So you have this cubic formation and this hexagonal formation. And I didn't even realize there was a distinction before looking into it. But someone did ask the question, well, which one's better or which one should I buy? The answer is pretty simple. You only have access to one. The type of moissanite that's grown for commercial purposes that's available in the market is hexagonal in, in nature. The cubic formation, even though it's technically more similar to diamond in a lot of ways, is not actually something that they can control well enough at this time to reliably grow it and market it and they also have difficulty getting it to nice attractive colors. But there are some characteristics about the cubic type of moissanite that would be really neat and interesting if it was available. But the answer is, if you're going out looking for moissanite and you're buying moissanite, you're buying the hexagonal formation. So not a lot of people are gonna run across that, but if you ever saw that somewhere, I wanted to clear it up, and it's also what I consider an interesting fact. So I wanna get into the pros and cons of moissanite, and we're gonna start with the negative aspects so that we can end on a more positive note. And when it comes to the, the cons of something like moissanite, the biggest thing is that from my observations, it doesn't quite hold up as well as diamonds. And this has been one of the more controversial things, and some people that have watched my videos seem to be really offended that I'm just trying to sell diamonds, which FYI, um, if you know where the money's going for me selling diamonds, I'd like to see it because on none of my videos have I sold anything as of yet. Um, I do hope to kind of sift through and figure out um, some good sources for that. And in fact, I would like to try and, and find some, some good companies that I can support and try and give you some links below. But it's funny when people say that I'm just marketing diamonds. No, my observations have been that diamonds have held up better over time. I've just seen some instances where I don't feel like moissanite has held up as well. And it is definitively less hard, and so it can scratch easier than diamond, although neither of them are very prone to scratching. So it's fair to say it's a very hard mineral. Um, but before I get too far into that, I wanna talk about some, some cons that can be looked at both ways. And so, the toughness and the durability of moissanite is one of those. Technically, that's a positive thing, is that it is a very tough and hard stone. But if we're comparing it to diamond, which most people are, then I would still give diamond a leg up in that category. So I put it in the cons for that reason, but there are some other things that I think are both in the pros and cons category. The other thing that I think can be both a pro and a con is the fact that it's lab grown. Now to some people, they feel like they lose some of the romance and maybe they feel like they're losing some of the value by buying something that's not natural, something that's man-made. And that, that is true, that's a very real consideration. And for a lot of people, whether you're one of them or not, a lot of people do feel like they're missing something, um, whether it be the romance of it or something else, where they may want a natural stone. And so it's important to know, moissanite that you purchase is going to be lab-grown. Now, at the same time, some people view lab-grown stones as a positive. They, they would rather have a lab-grown stone because they don't appreciate some of the negative connotations behind mining or mining practices. Um, this, is, this is and has been a very real concern although to the surprise of a lot of people, especially people that really hate on diamonds, so many things have changed in the mining industry over even the last decade, um, but especially the last 20 years or so, that would surprise a lot of people. Uh, I think many of the international mining practices have really um, taken some leaps forward. And on the other side of that coin, many of the claims as far as being green and environmental that lab-grown makers have 
claimed over the years, they've actually find that, that a lot of those have not been, uh, they have not been substantiated. We'll say that. There have been studies done that have actually shown that there are more emissions created from a lab-grown diamond than there are a natural diamond. Now, I know we're talking about moissanite, but I just wanted to point some of those things out. Again, these things can go both ways depending on how you end up falling. For me, you need to look at the source more than just the practice itself because there are a lot of mines even today that might not be using good practices. But there are a lot of mines that are actually more ethical and paying their workers better than many other industries in whatever country we're talking about. And on that same note, with Lab Grown, there are a lot of companies that have made huge strides in how they go about the process, but if you're buying a Lab Grown stone and you don't know where it's coming from, there's a good chance it's coming from India or China and many of the conditions in their factories are considered subpar by most standards. So while you may think you're supporting something that's more ethical, um, you actually might be on the opposite side. You may, be, you may be putting your money towards something that's more ethical and environmental by buying a natural stone as opposed to a lab-grown stone, but it usually comes down to more of the company itself. And that's why I prefer to vet those companies. I like to deal with local independent jewelers when possible, but if you are someone who's either going to buy it online anyways, or you just want to support this channel in some way, I am going to try and find some links that we can put to below to companies that I've been able to take a look at and I feel more confident in their practices. Now, like I said, I do want to end on a positive note. So if we look at some of the definitive pros of something like moissanite, we can go back to its durability. I know that I kind of said in comparison to a diamond, it does falter a little bit, but that's more for the average person who's trying to think about what they want. In the grand scheme of things, moissanite is an incredibly hard and durable gemstone. Now, one more note I did want to make on that, and I probably should have brought it up while we were still talking about the cons, is that diamonds, when we talk about the, the durability or we talk about toughness more specifically, they'll often put diamonds in a very good category and they'll put moissanite in an excellent category. Now, on paper, it seems like I would be wrong. And that's one of the reasons I'm trying not to be terribly dogmatic on this, but the reason for diamond not having that excellent grade is because diamonds have, have cleavage lines that if hit in a certain way or from a certain angle, you can actually break the stone almost in half uh, because cleavage lines are weaknesses in the structure of that, that diamond that run along a certain axis. And they cut diamonds in a specific way as to avoid this happening. But, because diamonds as a mineral do have those cleavage lines, they don't get to have that designation of being an excellent stone. Now, outside of those cleavage lines, they are more durable and they are a more tough mineral. But, they have cleavage lines. So, there, there is that trade-off. I have seen diamonds that have broken on those cleavage lines and it is really tough and really disappointing when you see it but from my experience they're much fewer and far between so again to be fair moissanite does not have that vulnerability and so moissanite is a very tough stone it does bear an excellent designation when it comes to toughness and it is very hard only falling short of something like diamond so again that is a very positive thing for moissanite and it should be something that you consider the next thing is the price. Even compared to lab-grown diamonds, moissanite are still a more attractive price than diamond. And you can find other alternatives for less, cubic zirconia being a main example. I still think moissanite is a better option than cubic zirconia, and the price is better than that of lab-grown diamond. We've even seen moissanite come down a little bit. But this is where I want to get into a few notes as far as what to look for if you are thinking about purchasing moissanite. And I hope you'll listen carefully to some of the finer points that I have here. 
So one of the first things that I want to talk about in reference to if you are thinking of buying Moissanite is that same question of where is it coming from, the source, the company that's doing it. Because there are a lot of random unknown Moissanite manufacturers out there, and if your motivation for buying Moissanite are the ethical reasons or the environmental reasons, then you want to pay close attention to who you buy it from because many of the unbranded ones are not at all concerned about that and they're not paying attention to those things one bit. They're just trying to produce the least expensive stone. So if you're finding stones that are noticeably less expensive than others, that may be one reason. It might not be important to you, but because it's commonly a reason people buy moissanite, I want to make sure you understand that that is a real thing. On that same note, sometimes when you're purchasing something like moissanite online, you see prices that I would call too good to be true. Because they probably are. Quite frankly, I've seen some that will say moissanite within the description, but then you scroll down and you find out that it's actually cubic zirconia. Um, it's, it's not good. I'll say that. They're technically not supposed to do that. They're, it's technically not legal in a country like the US, but I see it all the time. I can tell you countless websites that say things that I could definitively tell you are not true. And it's really unfortunate. Um, that's just the reality of the world we live in and they can't keep up the FTC and other organizations. They can't seem to keep up with everyone that's doing this. And so if they do find them and they try and crack down on them, that same person um, or website just pops up under a different name somewhere. And so it's really hard for that to be completely stopped. But if you understand that you're not actually getting moissanite, that you're getting something like cubic zirconia, again, if you're just price shopping, that's one thing. If you're value shopping or if you're looking for specific criteria, I would say go through a good source a reputable company, you're going to be much happier that way, and that would be my recommendation. The other points I want to make concerning buying moissanite have more to do with the traditional four C's when we buy diamonds, and I'm not going to go through all of those here. I've made other videos to try and teach about what those four C's mean and how they impact value in different ways, but when you look at moissanite, those same criteria are going to play into it. So just pay attention to if you're looking for something closer to colorless or if you're okay with a little bit of color, obviously the size, um, the company that you buy it from hopefully will talk about how they cut the stone and if they take a higher care when they cut the stone because that's going to make a difference in how brilliant and shiny it is and how it shows off. So the four C's are going to be important for you to examine and if you're curious about that I hope you'll check out my other videos talking about the four C's. Uh, I mentioned earlier in this video that I want to see your comments. I enjoy and appreciate them. I hope you understand that there are some things that are objective and other things that are from observation and opinion, and I'm trying to do my best to do what I think is helping others, but moissanite can be a beautiful stone, it can be an excellent alternative. I always do recommend trying to find a good local independent jeweler if you have one, but if you're going to buy something online and or you'd like to support this channel, again I'm working on trying to team up with some distributors and companies that I feel more comfortable in and hopefully will We'll be able to put some links below for you to check that out. I hope that if you've watched this whole video that you'll hit the like button and maybe share it with others who are curious about it. The bottom line is it's definitely an option, but there's a lot of other options and that's the great thing about it. In today's age, we have so many things we can choose from. Many of them have their pros and cons. I wanted to take an extra minute, talk specifically about moissanite today. I hope you'll keep coming back so that we can keep learning together.